today I'd like to give a little insight about how our soul can become wounded and become an access point for the enemy on this episode of Hearing God. Tell me. I hear you. Is it you? Is it you? I hear you. Hi, Freedom One here. Today I'm uh, talking about the, the topic of wounding in regards to spiritual house cleaning. It's a very deep issue and I can't say I've even grasped the depth of it myself. But what little I've learned has pushed me light years ahead in the process of spiritual house cleaning. So I definitely want to share even the smallest of gold flakes in the bottom of my miner's pan with you. Let me give you a scenario to flesh out. Let's say we've got two boys that are playing a heated video game and they can't agree on what they want to do next, so a fight ensues. Name calling, one shuts the game off and storms off. The other one is really ticked off because the game hadn't saved and it's all for loss and begins to have a cow about it. This is a recurrent cycle though where one boy will purposefully shoot them both in the foot and not care. But the other one is left raving mad, truly believing the other one hates him, vocally accusing him of that. And his prayers are to the tune of, Fix him, Lord! I did a teaching not too long ago called Righteous Indignation, The Wounded Offense. I'm bringing this up because it's got the same kind of overlap in that a person is notably wrong but then behaves badly after the fact with an end result that doesn't line up with the scriptures. Let me share a past personal experience to flesh this out some more. The kids are ripping the house apart, not listening to me, I'm not feeling well, and all I ask was for some peace and quiet. A wounding in my soul of not feeling listened to that goes all the way back from my childhood is triggered under this kind of stress. I storm out of my bedroom, flip a chair over, screaming at the kids to stop, storm back into my room, and then cry, why did they do this to me? Can you begin to see the element of the blame game thing here? But then, what is the fruit that was wrong? Screaming, flipping a chair, is that a good fruit? So, you know, then storming off to direct my prayers of fix them, (laughs) but it's not them. The problem was me. The problem is an access point from the childhood wound where I hadn't felt listened to. This also ties into the program called Spiritual House Cleaning, Negative Confessions, Inner Vows, and Curses that I did as well. Because by that wounding and believing and repeating the lie of nobody ever listens to me, the wound is anchored. The door is wide open for the enemy whenever the conditions are just right for sneaking in that wounded spot. How does this stuff seem fair if others push me down a path, wronging me, but I behave badly, and it's not really them, but it's my issue? (laughs) Kind of hard to swallow, eh? But it's by their fruits you shall know them. But it's by your fruits you shall know where you're at. (laughs) So quit looking and blaming others while maintaining a blind eye with yourself. That's what spiritual house cleaning is. You're paying attention to you first. So how does this work then? Okay, say you're at the mall and you get out of your car to see a neighboring vehicle's door open and slam into yours. Now let's not look at this as an insurance issue at all. This is, we're looking at this spiritually. We're looking at this in forgiveness. You may have forgiven the offender for having put the dent there, but in the soul, that dent or wound is still there until you allow Jesus to patch it. How do you know if it's healed or not? 
do you manifest bad fruit? Remember, it doesn't matter if you are wronged unjustly. Are you siding with the enemy in thought or in deed? Does this dent ride you like a chip on your shoulder that is visible enough for others to notice and be affected by it? This leads into a deeper study of what I called a negative projection from the negative confessions and her vows and curses program that I had mentioned earlier. If you watched it, you'll recall my asking, ever pick on a person or bring up a subject that is damaging to an individual and not know why? You're picking up on their negative projection. Well, it's the dent or wound in a person's soul that holds this pit that the enemy can cling to. The easiest way to describe this is as it being akin to wearing a kick me sign. Remember my story with the two boys? Guess which one is wearing the kick me sign and you can bet the other one is reading that sign. We need not only learn to patch up these dents, fill up these holes, but we need to grow in spiritual maturity and quit jumping in on the blame game. But instead, all we see the source is not the person, but either our own kick me sign or their wounds. You know, I can't, I just can't recite, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do enough. I want to share another example with you so you can really begin to move beyond a defensive player in this life so that you can begin to use your discernment muscle and become a healing vessel for Jesus in this world. This real example is not pleasant, but I must share with you because you need to learn to discern the big picture, to see cause and effect so that you will be one to go after the root and get the wounds in your own life healed and also so you can be effective in healing others. The example I'm using is not a Christian and there's a lot of things with being one called to teach. There's a lot of things I'd rather not know, but the Lord allows me to know things, uh, puts things in my life, and it's like a treasure as, that I can unfold the meaning and share with you, and that's what this is about. So this person's not a Christian, but within the past year or so within a small town mister we'll call him ABC has been at bars and parties and at these places other men expose themselves to him and chase after him it's just not one individual tormenting him either now why must I share this awful information this awful story well, it's because that was the effect. That is the kick me sign this guy is wearing. The cause is actually a deep wounding all the way from elementary school in which a school faculty member molested him and a couple other boys as well. You can bury, you can hide, you can try and run away, but spirit knows spirit. And if Jesus isn't filling the hole, the kick me sign is only covering it. Spiritual house cleaning is rummaging through all the halls and rooms of your soul, getting rid of all the junk, fixing what is broken, and replacing that which had been stolen. Dealing with wounds with traumatic experiences are best met with a pen in hand and a sieve under your mind as you strain to recall any hurt, pain, disappointment, abuse, shame, you name it, you best be journaling. And another thing is you, do you have bad fruits in your life? Are, the, are there things that keep recurring in a cycle? Those things are little marker points that you can go back and research from. When did that first begin? Then with your journaled information, you can begin to make a connection 
to find where that root began. In your journaling, you're considering each issue, being frank with your real feelings and beliefs about the matter, laid bare so that you can examine what you've allowed to become as a curse in your life through negative confessions or inner vows. Then any lies that you've believed, you must repent and reprogram your mind with the truth from the Word of God. Many people find visualization a very valuable tool in the healing process, which is essentially meditating and reliving that moment, but inviting Jesus into the scene with you, asking him where he was in all of it, and allowing the Holy Spirit to minister as you surrender that moment and invite Jesus to heal the wound from its source. Healing wounds in the soul can take some time, especially if that room in your soul needs a complete renovation. But don't lose heart. Deprogramming, rebooting, reprogramming. It will come so long as you begin to move on the offensive as well as understanding the defense in chasing after God. The bride is one that is continually being prepared, improving, getting out every spot to be the best that we can be, wholly presentable unto our Lord as a gift.